Good morning and welcome to the fifth Sunday in Lent here at Quincy Point Congregational Church. We are so glad that you are continuing your Lenten journey with us. Today is the fifth Sunday, as I said, so next week is Palm Sunday and the beginning of Holy Week. If you would like to see our Lenten and Holy Week information, please check out our social media. If you're new to Quincy Point, just please click on the subscribe button on our YouTube page. And for more information, you can contact the church office at office at quincypointcong, that's C-O-N-G dot O-R-G, or call the church office at 617-773-6424. Palms will be available, and you can pick those up at the church office, or we will leave some of them available outside on Friday before Palm Sunday, and you can pick those up if you can't make it during office hours. We want to continue to thank Karen and Joyce for Church School for All. They're putting together their church school program, um, teaching us all about Easter. And there are some fun crafts that I know Joyce and Karen will be showing you. So we hope that you check that out. It's really interesting. And we are very proud of the hard, hard work that Joyce and Karen are doing to present Church School for All for you. We've had Stewardship Sunday a couple of weeks ago, and we want to encourage everyone to please get your pledges in. Uh, we're working on the budget, so we need your pledges or your donations in as soon as possible. That will help the Stewardship Committee plan for next year. Again, if you are new to Quincy Point Congregational Church and would like to donate to help us with our ministries at Interfaith Social Services or with the McKinney Vento Project and, and other places in Quincy, please feel free to do so. And you can send your donations in to Quincy Point Congregational Church at 444 Washington Street, Quincy Mass 02169. So lots going on in our lives lately, lots going on here at the church. But we are here to take a deep breath and center our hearts on the one who has called us, and that is Jesus Christ. We hope that you find this time a place of quiet, of reflection, of in helping your faith grow and deepen as we continue to journey through our time of Lent. So take a deep breath, let your shoulders drop, just relax and be with us now as we begin our time of worship together.
The demands of following Jesus are great. He shows us that sometimes we must make extraordinary efforts to move in a new direction. As we consider the health of humanity, we cannot ignore the need to heal the very planet that sustains us. We live in increasing chaos of a beleaguered environment and the misuse of resources. We want to be saved by something or someone else. But we discover this week that we are in the boat with the one who shows us our power to turn it around, to calm the storm. We protect the jewel that is our home, restoring something beautiful from scars of the past. Let us begin with our opening prayer of confession. Let us acknowledge our need to restore, repair, renew our holy vessel, especially this holy container of life on which we live, this very planet. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the beginning you created this universe with a phrase, let it be, and the waters and dry land, the sky, the creatures were formed. You set humanity among these wonders and invited us to care and honor all things. We've not always answered that call. Seeing the abundance as a feast that would never end, we abused your generosity, Creator God, often taking more than we could replenish at a rate that could not be sustained. We're beginning to comprehend the magnitude of our incomplete stewardship, We are beginning to see that things cannot keep going as they are and have not have dire consequences. We're frightened, shocked into inaction and confusion. But we are now our witnesses to the forces of a world, forces that are telling us it is time. Water and wind and flood and fire and drought and earthquake, all of the earth's ways of communication are signaling to us to pay attention, to change our stewardship to one more in keeping with God's design and desire for us. Sometimes we think there is nothing we can do, that the change required is too great or the cost too high. It all feels so overwhelming. Help us, healer. Show us our ability to chart a different course. Show us that we can do great things in your name, Forgive our inaction. Move us to move one step at a time toward greater care for one another. In this silence, we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness. I invite you to imagine a warmth, begin to arise within the core of your body. It may help to keep your eyes closed. 
This warm orb of light is deep within you, a flame always there and ready when you need it. This warm glow begins to emerge from the recesses of your inner being, and it fills you with determination and courage. It floods your whole body until your skin is glowing with it, radiating outward. You feel strong. Know this. Jesus asks us to do hard things, to make changes, knowing we are capable, no matter what. We can change in order to heal this jewel planet called home. The calm of Christ in the storm is available for you, for me, for all. Take a deep breath in to let this truth fill you and breathe out with the relief of assurance. I invite you to imagine the warmth that surrounds you extending to those who may be next to you in close proximity. Imagine it extending beyond your walls to the apartment complex or building in which you live, the neighborhood, the wider community, the church, and seeing it spread like the rising sun, let it expand to all the world. Let this be our peace. If you have not already, I invite you to open your eyes. The peace of Christ is with you and also with you. Sing my soul, my Savior. 
This morning, I am reading the, from the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verses 18 through 27. Now, when Jesus saw the great crowds around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. A scribe then approached and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of his disciples said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. And when he got onto the boat, his disciples followed him. A windstorm arose at sea, so great that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. And they went and woke him up, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, you of little faith? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was dead calm. They were amazed, saying, What sort of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Throughout our Lenten series, we have encountered the outsider and the wounded and the seemingly broken, people who have demonstrated the deeper, more lived-out kind of faith that Jesus had been talking about throughout his earthly ministry. From the leper, to the blind man, to the centurion and his slave, to last week's older woman, the synagogue leader, and his daughter, we have witnessed how their faith their trust, their unwavering belief in Jesus has either restored them to health, community, or literally to life, or whose actions made them collaborators with Jesus in their own healing. Not only that, but we have also learned that Jesus is eager to respond, eager, that is, to care for these characters, to make them well, and to make them whole. Writes David Luce in In the Meantime, but it's not just we, Matthew's readers, that learn this, of course. The disciples are there as well. Indeed, the disciples are Jesus' primary audience, the ones who listened to him preaching his most famous Sermon on the Mount and then heard those professions of trust and witnessed Jesus' response to those in need. But after all these displays of disciple-like faith, Jesus' own disciples can't muster anything quite like that. Or at least, judging by his words of rebuke to his disciples, that's what Jesus seems to think. Now, I am fortunate to never have been in a boat during a storm, but you don't have to grow up this close to the ocean to not have witnessed the power of the wind and rain and waves the gray-green water churning, the foam white, the overwhelming roar of the waves pounding the sea walls and breakwaters. I've watched storms from the safety of the shore or tucked cozily within a seaside cottage and thought fervently, I am so glad that I am not out there right now. So I can only imagine how honestly frightened the disciples were as wind and water threatened to swamp them. Not to mention that a quarter of the disciples used to be professional fishermen who, again, in my experience, don't scare easily. Thus, the disciples must have truly been in real peril, real fear of being sunk, so that they had to cry out to be saved, which is also a testimony to their deep, lived-out faith that Jesus can protect them from the storm. Which is why, truth be told, I've always found Jesus' reaction to their obvious terror a bit troubling. The only reason I can think of is that even after all of their time spent together, even after crying out to him for help, 
the disciples are still afraid, writes David Luce. Notable, Jesus comments directly on their fear, which apparently was evident even after they asked him to save them. So perhaps they asked Jesus to save them, but do not really believe, at least not enough to trust as did the leper and the blind men and the centurion and the older woman and the synagogue leader and his young daughter, that he can. This possibility seems confirmed in that they are amazed when the storm responds to Jesus's command and only then profess their awe. Does that mean that the disciple, like faith, required trust that is absent of fear? If so, then most of us likely wonder if we have the capacity for such faith. But maybe that's why Matthew includes the story, one of two where the disciples are caught in a tempest at sea, to reassure us that even Jesus' own disciples struggled to live into what Jesus expected and promised. If it takes them time to grow in faith, then perhaps we should not be surprised that it takes us time as well. And there's one other thing about this story in Matthew that bears mentioning. I may never have been in a sailboat during a storm, but I have been in one during a dead calm. A sailboat in a dead calm flounders. A sailboat in a dead calm does nothing. A sailboat in a dead calm goes nowhere. When Jesus calmed the waters, he stopped the boat from swamping, yes, but all forward movement stopped as well. They could not get to where they needed to go. So maybe, just maybe, Jesus tells us not so much with words, but with action, that we need not fear the storm as much as we may need the storm sometimes to propel us toward where we need to be. But all in all, no matter if the seas are roiling or the air is still as a tomb, one thing remains constant. To those who fully trust, and even those who don't, Jesus still responds, then as well as now. Let us pray. Dear God, grant us faith to turn over our cares, our worries, our concerns, and yes, our fears to you, trusting that you will hear us and respond. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us now center our hearts on our prayers for God. Prayers for the week that was, for the week to come, thinking about the people who are in our life, the situations that we want to bring before God. Let us center our thoughts on our creation, the world around us, and lift them all up. And let us do so together. Taking a deep breath and exhaling, let us be together in prayer. Healer of our every ill, especially our fractured creation, we come before you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know already you are at work among us, showing us the way to recovery from the hurts and grief of our time. You remind us that you are in the boat with us in the midst of difficult times. You calm the waters and keep our heads above the waves. We thank you for charting this new course before us, giving us the strength and clarity we need to move from one way of life to another. We pray that we will continue to learn and see and know how our actions affect others, not just ourselves. We give thanks for the wake-up calls that our young people are sounding and we pray for the fortitude to move this journey forward alongside them. We give thanks for the courage of activists and educators who help us wake up to this storm and to see that we have it within our power to calm that storm, to restore the earth's wholeness. We ask for courage and encouragement to reevaluate how we as a church can join this effort now and into the future. 
we pray this day for. And now lift up the names of the people and the situations and the things over which you are concerned. Thank you for hearing these prayers, Healer God. And now hear us as we together say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus. Ritual action. The words of Jesus we highlight this week from the healing story are Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. This may seem like harsh words, and yet we hear Jesus' urgency. Now is the time to move, no matter how difficult. We cannot wait. What is past is past. There is brokenness, and there are casualties in its wake. But we can move forward. We can make changes. We can face storms because we are a people led by the healer, the calm in the storm, who can offer us faith in the midst of fear. And so this week for our symbolic ritual action, we're going to restore some beauty by adding to the beauty of our glass pieces. You received thin craft wire along with your piece of sea glass in your Lenten kit. You're invited to wrap some of that wire around a piece of sea glass, creating a pendant that can be hung in a window or made into a necklace. 
a constant reminder of our role as those who must take care, must care for and contribute to, rather than diminish the beauty of this earth. Take some time now to do this simple wrapping and crafting with the wire and glass. We invite you to take a photo of it if you can and share it with us. We will use these images in our worship next week. This week, the reaction of the crowd in the story is amazement at Jesus' connection to the cosmic forces of wind and wave. As we've come to understand through our experiences and through science, we know that all things are connected. We are part and parcel of all of creation. Our stewardship of God's creation calls us to be attuned to all around us. We feel the cry of creation and we must heed the call to work for healing. And so in our communal discerning about how this church community could become a health hub through our ministry and mission, let us put our minds to imagining how we can learn about contributing to the beauty and healing of our environment. I invite you to explore with us the possibility for a new or renewed commitment to a contribution we can make at QPCC to our larger community's efforts to recover from this past year. Now go with confidence that we can face the storm with Jesus in the boat, recovering our depth of love for all and our joy of living in this world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears, follow me, and may the Spirit hover, move, and deliver salve to your soul and a spring in your step. Amen.